Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Graph Studio Modelers. I'm Dave Forrest with my good friend Harvey Lowe. And in today's episode, what are we talking about? <laughs> what <laughs> this, is this? This is totally always off script. So D Dave didn't know I'm showing this today, so his reaction is real. Um, we gotta first say a first thing to YouTube. These are not real guns, they are model toy kits of firearms. Uh, and I wanted to talk a bit about this it, piece that I made. It does look awfully real. Does it? Yes. But it's not real. It's not. It's plastic. It is plastic. And it's a toy. So I think that we can cover how I did the finish. Not not to show you how you paint like a one-to-one -one scale model gun, but I think some of these techniques will be relevant to painting, say, 35th or 24th or now 1 16th, you know, machine guns that come with those larger kits. Right. Right? Uh, and we can talk a bit about finishing the techniques. So that's really the reason why I wanted to show you this. And perhaps some nostalgia to talk about these kits. Because, Dave, they, it, they came out, I think, in the 70s. And uh, we're going to show you a couple of photos during the, the, the uh, talk that we have today. And the first photo, number one, I want to talk about, and, the, and Robert will put it on the screen, is the LS uh, company of plastic models back in the 70s did a whole range of these these gun models and you can see in the photo that they did everything from from handguns to machine guns and I used to work at a, at a hobby store in in one of my first jobs at, at a mall in Toronto and I remember at the time the manager loved them so much and this is in a mall uh, he brought in the hole and he wanted me to build them and we put them in the store window and all the kids came out bought them they're one-to-one -one scale, and um, it's kind of walking around the mall with them. I don't think you could do that now, but LS... It's a different world today. It is, yeah. but they, you can see in the photo that they did everything from M16 machine guns, police guns, and military guns. And this particular one that I'm going to talk about today, as you can see, is an old uh, 1873 uh, Colt, one of the, basically the first Army uh, Colt pistol. Uh, that they did that used this type of um, te technique of I don't know a lot about guns, but but a cartridge as opposed to using some sort of cap and ball for the earlier pistols, huh. and it was motivated by my recent trip um, to the Little Bighorn uh, just last June, where I had this kit sitting the longest time in my stash. Like it's very old. You can even see the old distributor Hobbycraft Canada, and um, I so how long how long would you have had that? Oh my God! I think I've had this since the '80s. Wow! And I, I have, I still have a few because they're fun to build. I don't think there's in vogue anymore because, well, the subject matter is obviously politically charged. But that notwithstanding, I just think that a lot of people. But, but from a historical standpoint. Yeah, right? yeah. But I don't think a lot of well, you can't buy these anymore except through, like they don't make them anymore. You can only get them at trade shows. And they actually command fairly high prices because they're incredibly um, rare. But they actually build and function like a real firearm, like the parts and all that. But they are, although they call them one-to-one -one scale, Dave, they are not. They are actually slightly different in size, and I'll show you later uh, a, an example of the, the model cartridge bullet that they give you this, and compared to a real one, which I have. So the, so you couldn't put real bullets in them, but they are toys, essentially, back then, and they were marketed as such. So the next picture, again, that flash on the screen is a close-up of this, and you can see a, a much better photo of the, the kit at hand, and uh, we're gonna talk a bit about that. So that's what our episode's about. Yeah, yeah, so let's get, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it looks, I mean, from here, looking at it in person, looks great. Looks, yeah, looks, looks very real. Thank you. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, we're back, and uh, I'm gonna refer to a photo that's gonna flash on the screen. This is basically well, it's a different model, but it kind of shows you the contents of what are in these kits when you get them, and, it, and a lot of people collect them. And it, and again, to YouTube, these are not real guns; they're toys, uh, and they they're they're fun to build. Um, just if, if but it looks like there's like pre-painted parts and yeah that, yeah that, they come that's that? a good point they come in like this gun finished look and this one's a, a cold bunt line again I don't know a lot about guns and you see the the handle on the kit uh, is tries to match what the, I guess the real gun look like and you can see there's, there's not a lot of parts but they they mimic how how the real gun I guess would be put together 
So um, a lot of people do like these just to learn a bit about how firearms work and if that's your fancy then these are the kits to get. But the problem with these is I wouldn't bring them to a show. No. I wouldn't personally. I, I wouldn't enter them in a show. I wouldn't. They, they're just in your house to display. That's for the you. way I look at. Yeah, this is a for you build. It's a for me build. For and me it's, build. it's to learn a bit about yeah. them. And so, if if you look at this particular piece, and we'll talk about it, it does look real, and I'll show you how I did it. But it it, it functions like a real gun. See, it huh. it pulls back. This this cylinder moves. This little thing here is, I don't know what they call this, but it comes out so you can load the rounds and, you know, it clicks. So how does it, like, is there springs, elastics? There's springs, there's springs, springs in there, yeah. And it all comes in the kit? It's all in the kit, hmm. just as is. Now, I did do modifications to this, as modelers do. So I the, the way I'd see this is, I see this as a model kit no different than a Sherman tank or a, a P-51 Mustang. There are some inaccuracies with it, and uh, I'll show you how I made it a little more accurate. Well, except you can't walk into a store no. or a bank and hold up, no. hold it up with a Sherman no, tank. No, don't show this to your local convenience store owner. Right. By any means. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but I did learn a lot about the finishing, which I think is useful. If you build those uh, one sixth figures with the the machine guns, you know the figures, yeah. um, you can use te this technique. I don't know if you could use the technique I'll show you on one thirty fifth. Uh, too small. It's too small. Yeah, maybe too small. But if you are doing like a one-sixth machine gun or something like that with those larger dragon figures, then the things I'm going to show you about how I did this might help. So let's let's first start off. I'm going to just kind of leave this on the side here. Now I'm going to go through a bunch of photos, and the next one on the screen that um, that we'll see is photo number four, and this shows you the assembly of the barrel to the frame of the gun. You can see it's just like a, a real firearm. And you can see that there are screws in, in the model. Now, is that a one-piece barrel? It's actually a, a two-piece. Two so piece. you actually have to fill the seam, wow. just like a real kit. Wow. And if you want to make it real, fill that seam with putty. And this particular view shows you the, and again, I don't know what the parts are called in the gun, but. It, it, the, that's the piece that has a spring in it for you to push a rod to eject the cartridge and they make the model like that. There's a spring in there. You see, and there's the frame of the gun. And you can see in this picture that I actually fill, had to fill, I had to look at real pictures of the gun and I had to fill the seams, right? Just like on a model aircraft. Otherwise you believe them, it's, it's fake. You have to fill those seams. There's a lot of putty going on there, right? So this photo five really shows you the frame of the gun and that there is a lot of work to it. Yeah, it looks like it. Right? Amazing. And here's the fit of the barrel into the frame, just like the real gun. And you can see the spring. You can see the spring. Huh? And so you're learning a little bit, hey, this is how this thing works. So I think they were more educational at the time, but certainly now they're not a politically correct Piece, and you don't see these at shows. And, and again, no, if you no. have, please don't take them to shows. I wouldn't do that. Um, they're just for, for me in the house and uh, for guests to come in. And, and I think I like it because then some of my, my family friends think, is that real? No, it's plastic. There's another angle in photo number eight that shows the amount of putty that I had to use to fill them. So they're not exactly well built from the modeling perspective, but you do have to do some work on them if you want to be serious. Photo 9 shows the cylinder also has sinkhole, like any model aircraft would have, and you have to fill those. And that would have been a multi-part. Actually, no, that's a single oh, cast. A, really? Yes. Wow. And that's 70s technology. I don't know, what do they call that now? They call it slide, slide molding? Yeah, I don't know how they did it. It's one piece of hunk of plastic. And that's impressive. It's very impressive. LS was ahead of its game. And, now they, and obviously, to you modelers, they still exist as a company. Um, they switched mostly to LS uh, aircraft. They do a lot of aircraft, um, and now I, I think they're Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, they're Japanese. Yeah. But that this was big back in the seventies. Everybody bought them and built them until I think people were showing them to the neighborhood store, and that's not good. <laughs> so <laughs> here's here's how I actually made it to a more realistic. The the model has missing items, and and when I looked at the real steel. It had these, these 
I don't know what they are, but I guess they're where the screws or something. And I had to make those out of uh, styrene plastic. Those are like caps or what are they? I, I don't know. Those are, there's a screw on the other side of the frame, but that's, I don't oh, know. I see. Okay. What, I don't know a lot about guns. But you see, you look at the photo number 10, you see the, the, the spring in the handle. Uh, I don't know if that was on a real gun, but that helps. Uh, that's the metal that provides resistance so that you can cock the uh, trigger to, 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 to pull back, you see? Interesting. So it was manufactured with that in mind that it would work. And it's the springs and pieces of metal in there that provide the tension for you to pull the trigger back. And, and uh, That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, that's why I thought it'd be good to show. That's a bit of engineering. Now this photo, Dave, you know I've got the Cameo 4 yes. printer. Yes. This model does not have the markings on the on the pistol. Now I know we're all very serious models as we go to this depth, but you can see in this picture that the, when I looked at the real um, firearm, it had these markings pro prominent on the barrel. And so I designed them in the Cameo Studio. And what I did was I, I printed them out on um, very thin uh, 0 0.010 plastic. And then I used as picture 12 illustrates, I taped it to the area of the barrel, and then I used a little metal oh, engraver wow. uh, to do my best to get those etchings in. Why do I do that? Well, you know, we're modelers. And again, I don't treat this as a firearm, it's how do I make it look like That's amazing. A, like it's a scale model. So the screws in this picture are metal screws, yes, plastic screws? Yes, they're metal screws, they're metal and screws. they come with the kit. And they are essential to provide strength to it because it, it, it is moving parts to it. If you yeah. put them in plastic, it wouldn't. Yeah. So, so photo 13 so a, shows. So it's a bit of a mechanical build. It, it is. It's not, uh, it, it, not it a is. static build. Correct. Yeah, interesting. It, correct. It's, it's a learning tool from what I read in the earlier marketing. And, and photo 13 shows that he used one of these uh, uh, handheld engraving tools, which I got off Amazon. Eh? It's like battery run. It's a tiny little thing. You, you could use it for other purposes. I bought that off Amazon, and you just use the template. Let's go to finishing. Because the finish is, is really what, what strikes me here. Yes, yes. Uh, and and I, I really struggled with how do I make this thing look real. And I looked at a couple of real guns at a gun store, and they had a patina to them. They had a shine. And uh, you can see in this photo number 14, I use mostly all clad. Hmm. with some metalizers from testers and you see the product on the right it's AK's engine oil and I use that to provide a greasy look interesting so I sprayed the model silver with uh, Tamiya I think it's the, what is it AS12 the aluminum yes yes yeah sprayed as a base, that, that was as base. A base. Yeah. and then I went over it with these all clad colors you see here they're, they're kind of like the burnt metal types and I, I, I layered them on just like the episode you did on the 109 hmm. and then I used some of the Tamiya gun metal on top of that and as I'm doing it I took a cloth and I dipped it in enamel thinner and I was kind of distressing it and rubbing it apply another one distress rub and do certain areas different it's no different than what you did on your 109 and uh, we're, we're just cut off a camera back to this piece and you can see that it's it's actually a very very metallic look but uh, like your 109 it's not consistent in its finish see these screw areas are a little scuffed yeah and that's the Tamiya AS12 showing through interesting okay and uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, another technique that I learned on finishing this, and you can apply this to your one sixth larger firearms. Again, I don't think it'll work in one thirty fifth. So I'm just looking at this here, and you can see, like, on the edge of the of the of the caulking mechanism, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like how that that's a little bit shiny. Almost like you dry brushed it. Yeah, but, that, but that's just but that's, that's just distressing it down to the AK as well. That's what that's that is. exactly it. Interesting. I didn't dry brush it. I just distressed it with the humbrol. I used humbrol enamel thinner, but you can use the odorless, and you keep rubbing the all clad. And it just comes right off, and it, it that's how they weathered. And now is that is that like do you have to do you have, does they have to go after it aggressively, or does it come no, off very easily? No, it pretty or? comes out. Just don't let it dry too too long, and it's it's comes so you let off. Let it dry. Fine. Let it dry a bit. To touch, and then ten minutes, and then go start to stress. You just use a soft cloth that you would use to polish uh, shoes. Interesting, right? Uh, and that's why I'm doing this episode. It's not about guns, <laughs> YouTube. It's about how to finish 
uh, a model to, an interesting technique. to make it look real. And, and so we're going to cut back to the photos. And now the next photo that you're going to see on screen is photo 15, shoe polish. I actually thought, how do I get... The, the, the firearms people call it gun blue, right? And it's, it, there is a hint of blue to it. So I thought, pass in the shoe store, like all modelers, what can I use? Shoe polish. And it's blue shoe polish. And I use these. Have you used these, Dave? These are the uh, AK where it's a it's a paste. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, I, I've tried them, but I really not not a lot of experience with them. I don't like them in in like thirty fifth firearms, but for this larger piece, they do work because you're 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 taking that and you're burnishing it on on top of it as a additional depth. Another layer. Another layer, so to speak, to get that finish on, on the pistol. And I'll show you, if you look closely at, at, keep in mind that blue shoe polish for a minute, I'll show you some close-up pictures of the model and where, where, where I used it. The handles. Again, if you look at real pictures of the 1873 Colt, they're incorrect. They didn't have the logo. So I had to fill them. And, and so you did would, your research on this? I, I had to, yeah, yeah. just like a model. And I used a regular hole punch and I used fill them up. And so you end up with a pistol with no markings on it, because I don't know a lot about this real gun, but those hand grips snapped in. Hmm. They, they were not screwed in at the time. And I just used the Tamiya color, as you can see in photo 17 here, to provide the first coat. Photo 18, as you see on the screen here, shows you the colors I used to provide the wood grain effect. And they're all uh, Winsor Newton oils and, and some of the Aptilung. Interesting. And then how would you how would you actually apply those onto the handle? By by hand, by brush. By brush. They by, whack it on and just kind of work it until correct. you get that wood grain. That's finish. the wood grain that nice. you see now in, in, That's beautiful. in photo nineteen. Stunning. Yeah, I mean it's 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 plastic. And here's the other side of the grip. You can see the pattern. You can see the pattern in this photo twenty uh, of where the grains are. And it took a while to get it going, but. And I like how there's a little bit of wear and tear on the bottom. I, I chipped it. Yeah, it looks great. Right, and again, it's Beautiful. it's it's a model. It's, like it's amazing. Like when you do these different subjects, how, like in this case, you're you're looking at different finish. You're trying to invent different Correct. finishes to get. Like you know, you know what you want. To, you, where you yes, want to get? You know what you got to get. figure out. Okay, well, what what's the journey to get there? Uh, exactly. That's amazing. That's exactly it. That's Dave. amazing. Now, the research I found that they had what they call cartouches. Each manufacturer uh, etched in, uh, uh, it's called cartouche. A cartouche? A cartouche. You're French. Uh, did I pronounce it right? Cartouche? Cartouche. Cartouche. And they, they, everyone who inspected the pistol put their stamp on it. And this one, I don't know whose it is, but it, it's, I, I replicated it with styrene to get the shape of the square. And then I used the engraving tool to carve in the, the, I tried to make it look in photo 22, I tried to make it look as much as I could to the original. Amazing. And in the final product in photo 23 here is, is the cartouche mark on the grip. And this pistol I used as a model is based on the real one that they actually had traced back to being at the actual battle site. The, the, uh, the natives had captured it. And, uh, the Little Bighorn. Yes, at the Little Bighorn. And Amazing. eventually it found its way back to the collectors, like a hundred and whatever years. And I heard that the real pistol of this just went on auction. Um, I think it was three quarters of a million dollars. That's what it went for. But the wow. model cost me 20 bucks. <laughs> Picture 24 now shows the cartridges, the bullets. I stripped the... Uh, the kit comes with them with uh, like a, a chrome... Plating. You know, plating on them. I stripped it with uh, 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 oven remover. Okay. And I primed it with Tamiya uh, primer. And then I simply used these products, as you can see look, in photo 25. Look, real. look amazing. Yeah. And uh, to, to make it look a, a better than the plated versions. And I, and I used the pigments to buff, to provide that buff. Interesting. So that's what this photo 25 shows. And the product, again, you, you've seen it here, but in the photo might show you better. I think it does look like a gun. Again, I don't I want to take it out <laughs> and show my local... No. I mean, it looks, I mean, it looks great. There's some more photos it of it. It looks fantastic. Right? And I've had some people tell me, uh, who are gun experts, 
I showed them online and said they can't tell the difference. So I guess I did the right thing. Oh, great. That's photo 27. I mean, it looks great in the photo and I'm looking at the real thing at the same time. Right. It's amazing. There's 28. You can see the distress. These weathered like this <clears> over time. Now, I don't think they would have looked like this when they were at the Little Bighorn because they would have been new. Apparently, they were brand new at the battle. Um, and they had them. All the troopers were armed with these, although I think Custer had a different type of firearm. There's the underside you see in photo 29. And it's incredibly distressed, just like the real one. But again, this would be the pistol as it looks like today after being, you know, in a in a a, a home for so long. Yeah. Collecting dust, it wouldn't have looked like that. Would this would have been. Sure. This is would have been what maybe 150ish years. 140 uh, to be exact, 137 years, because I was there at the anniversary reenactment. And there's a, there's there you can see the the you see the the etching. On the barrel, you can see it in photo number um, thirty. See, amazing. And I buffed, I buffed the, it off intentionally so you could see it. And there's a nice. You can see the the frame has U.S. Army on it, so I engraved that in as well. Um, we are rather over the top as modelers. Now here's here's where I use the paste in photo thirty one. You can see the cylinder is a slightly blue color, right? Really. Yeah, huh. you apply the shoe polish with a cloth over it, and it gives you that blue. And it was different in, in the uh, real one when I looked at it on the internet. And you can see the stress marks where the there's, a there's a, I guess, a piece of metal that helps move the cylinder. You see the stress marks yeah, there yeah. when the cylinder rotates. And, and I just used a paintbrush by hand. And make those stress marks. To so make that, those stress marks. Interesting. So you look, looked at a real photo yes. and replicated what you yes, saw Yes, replicate the photo, the photo yes. Yeah, and again, I'm not, a, I'm not a gun expert. I'm a modeler. So please don't send me emails that, yeah, you collect guns and, you know, it's not about gun control. It's about a hobby right now. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. There's another photo with the 32, which shows the bullets. Beautiful. That's amazing. Now this photo is just, just a few photos of the reenactment at the Little Bighorn, just to give you a sense of the context of this model. Um, now, the Little Bighorn is in the middle of nowhere. It's in Montana. It's in southwest Montana. Yeah, the closest city is Billings, Montana. And I'm from Toronto, Canada. That's where Dave and I are. And so I had to fly out to Billings. And then it's another hour and a half drive from, from Billings, Billings. Wow. to the battlefield. And these are reenactors. And this is on the um, battlefield. And they're carrying Spencer repeater rifles. Uh, and you can actually become a part of them and pay money to ride the horse. I didn't, and participate in this event. Um, but you can see it's very realistic. Uh, this, these particular photos are showing you what what the reenactment was. The one here of uh, the fellow on the horse is a Indian scout, hmm. and very realistic. And the last picture here is picture 37, which is one of the guys. The only reason I'm showing it is he's holding the Colt, an 1873 Colt, and I took this with his permission, of course. Um, he he would be a, he told me he was around 18 or 19. So what you're looking at is what those guys would have looked like at that age. They're not, you know, 40 and 50 year old. They would be this young. <laughs> and, not 40 and 50 year old. No. Out of shape. No, that's right. Yeah. So those are the folds. Now we'll come back to the model here, and again. It, it was a fun build, and you know I think that I learned a lot. And can, you not, can you not point that at me, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, by the way, never never point a gun at a person, even if it's a fake. And I do urge, if you are building these LS guns, don't take them to shows. Just yeah. just put them on your wall and learn from them. And uh, I think that what I learned out of this is different methods of stressing and de-stressing and weathering. And uh, you can use these techniques, I would suggest, on one-sixth weapons, those larger dragon ones. I think for 35th, what do you use for 35th on your... For metal? Yeah. Um, there's, I just, I'll paint it in like a very dark gray, and then I'll just go over it with uh, graphite. Oh, like a pencil of graphite. Yeah, pencil or, gra or the, the, like a pigment in the same type of color and just kind of rub it on. Like it's, that. yeah, that's, that's the easiest thing. I think so too. I, I, I like the metalizers and I, and I, I take a uh, pencil. Yeah, but it's small, like a small MG or a 30 cal or an MG you know, 42 yeah. or 38 or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's as simple as that. I mean, this, but that won't work. This won't, it's no, big. it's it's too big. Right, so you have to, you you have have to, to change the you, technique. You do have to change the technique on this. That and, and you can see, you can hold it, it's very light. Yeah. 
It's very light. And, well, it and looks, you know. I've heard some guys in the old days the used to fill it with a heavy material. I don't bother. It's a model. And I got this little display base for it. It's real. Like, if I just put it here and don't pick it up, it looks like a real gun. It does. Now, like let me show does. you, this, to wrap up, I'm going to show you that, that this is indeed a toy. So the, these are the... Um, the example of the of the I'll call them a cartridge or bullet or whatever. These these are the the ones I painted. They're, they're you see you can pick it up. They're plastic yep. and they're they look real and I no think problem. right I think they did the trick. Um, and you it, you can, with the gun they kind of like a but here's a box of real ones. Now these I bought through a collector. These are the real ones from the same time period. Now look at the size of difference. So the gun is, I, I don't know, I don't think it's true one-to-one -one scale. It's probably slightly smaller. But you cannot put this in there. But, but the, the, the gentleman in the photo here is holding... He's holding probably a real one. And it looks kind of... It looks the same, but look, here, take a hold yeah, of this bullet. Look. That's, that's a original... Now, that won't fit in the... Like it the, will not. These, these fit. These so maybe, maybe they did that on purpose. Probably. Maybe they scale these down. Probably. Maybe. Because they don't want kids to put real... But it, it looks... It looks the same size to like me. Like there certainly isn't. Like if I look at, if I look at the picture and I see the gun here, mm -hmm. and I look at the difference between, the, like it, there isn't that same scale no. difference in the no. picture. So no, there isn't. my guess is maybe they did, they went smaller on the bullets because they didn't want it to be. Maybe, maybe that was their way. Of, I think you're, I think you're right. The cylinder holes are are yeah. for the little guy. You yeah. can't tell. Yeah. But that's good. It, that's very cool. It's you can see that it's a similar finish, but that's a real one, and they're yeah. fairly heavy. I I don't collect them but I wanted to buy one just to see what it looked like against the model yeah so so really that's all we have for that and I hope you guys understand that for us it's about modeling um, well I, I do any subject so please excuse that if it's a firearm I'm not advocating either way I'm staying away from that debate and simply sticking to the art yeah, it's a modeling model. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a model. it's a model and I hope YouTube understands that it's we're not talking about guns per se we're talking about the hobby and how to make something look. But it looks yeah. looks fantastic. Well done. You know, it's funny. I have uh, speaking of LS kits. I actually do have a World War II German stick grenade. Oh yeah, from LS too. Yeah. I forgot. And you I, did. you know, I there might, you go. I might use some of those. Maybe that'll inspire me to use some of those techniques on that thing. And that's a one-to-one -one scale too. It's a one-to-one -one scale. Oh yeah, I forgot you had that. Yeah. I yeah. think they do a series of grenades. They do a Japanese one. Yeah, I don't do know. I just I saw it as one of those things yeah. you see at a show, and you're like, I yeah. gotta, you know, gotta take that. But again, I can't overemphasize. I will not take this to a show. Yeah. Don't do it, guys. And yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't take the. No. If I did the sticker, I no. wouldn't take it to a show either. Because it could be stolen, and then people will use it for nefarious purposes. Could be. Yeah, so you gotta be careful. I. It's just for me. Yep. It's to hang. But it's house. a piece of history, right? It's, yep. it's a. It's, it's a tribute to history. Yep. And it's a model. And, it's a one, it's, and it says in the box, one-to-one -one scale. So my guess is the gun is the correct scale. I guess. And they just went different on the bullets. I guess. And, and again, here's a, here's a close-up of the instructions. I don't know if it... Look, it, it's, like a, it's like a real yeah. way you build it. And so I presume it is one-to-one -one scale. But who's to tell? Again, and I don't know if these resemble the original gun parts. I, I don't know. It's because of the molding techniques. I think these these were originally one piece metal and they have to do a two piece, but it, it was fun. I did this in a week. Wow. It's a, after I came back from the battle, I said, well, I want to build models. I don't have time to do a 54 millimeter figure. And so I had this. Let's, Very let's cool. do this. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's a conversation piece right there. There you go. Nicely done. And that's all we have today on that quick one. I hope you guys appreciate LS one. Something, one. yeah, something very different, right? Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody. We'll uh, we'll see you next time around. Cheers.